When your initial configuration is done, when your extension has been enabled, you can now configure your Copernic desktop search to uh, index what you need. So you need to go in tools menu, options, and you will see here emails and organizer. You're gonna have to wait maybe a couple seconds to see your Outlook profile detected. If you see it is taking too long or uh, the email and organizer are not properly detected, you can go in advanced menu and just change the Outlook plugin to another one. So the native plugin from for Outlook is the right one if you if you're using a the latest version of Outlook. But if you're using an older version of Outlook, you can use the Outlook add-in or the NetOffice plugin. But for me, I'm using the latest Outlook 2016 and it's the same for 2019 in emails and organizer just wait a couple minutes and you're gonna see your email folders right there to index you can choose to index the whole mailbox or you can select the folders that you want to be indexed i would suggest at this point to remove the contacts and the global address list if you're in a professional environment because the global address list might take long to index and you might want to have your files indexed first so just uncheck the global address list the contacts and everything and just skip to the files section right here you're gonna see uh, many folders already detected so copernic desktop search at first is designed to index your whole computer you you're gonna see the c drive here indexed for folders and subfolders you're gonna see your desktop documents downloads music pictures and videos if you don't want these files and these folders to be indexed you can just skip them so if i don't want half my videos indexed i can just click on this source here and just click on skip all you can add manual folders by clicking on the add button you can just browse your computer and just select what you need and just select after if you need to index those folders and the subfolders or if you just want to skip the subfolders you can select each category if you're indexing a music source for example you can just remove the other ones and just keep from the for the music if you need some folders to be indexed in priority, you can just select them. So if, you, if for example, uh, here I want to index my desktop documents and download folders in priority, I can just select them here. I would also suggest not to remove those source right here, <clears throat> like the C configuration the program files the c users or c windows because those folders are often containing system files that doesn't need to be indexed at all or could cause issues with your software so i would really suggest to keep those folders skipped for the index and just add manual folders that really need to be indexed so right here i have my c drive and my E drive. If you have an external drive, you can just select hit right here, browse your PC, and select the drive that you need to be indexed. So right here, those are shared drives on the network. You can just select which one you wanna index. Click on OK, and it's gonna be indexed. You must take note that for the shared drives on the, your network, they must be indexed with the same drive letter each time so if you're rebooting your computer and the network drive is always changing its drive letters you have to go in the windows settings and fix the drive letter always on the same source otherwise 
Copernic is going to be indexing all the time. Each time you reboot your computer, it's going to have to rebuild it, its index for that source. After that, you can just go in the browser. If you want to index your favorites or a history, you can just select which one you want. So in my opinion, I don't want to have those things indexed in my Copernic desktop search. So I'm just unchecking those boxes. After that, you can add Google Drive. If you want to sign in with Google, if you have, you, you must have Google Drive installed on your computer first, and then you have to sign in with Google, allowing, authorizing Copernic Desktop Search to index those sources. You can just do the same thing with OneDrive, Dropbox, but all of those cloud drives must be installed on your computer first. After that, you have the image text recognition, though, so it's the OCR processing. You must choose here the type of language that you ha you're gonna have in your documents. So if you mostly have only English documents, you just select English. If you have documents translated in English, Spanish, French, uh, you just select the language that you need at this point. Because if you select every uh, different languages it might have some uh, performance and speed impact on the extraction process so you should really just focus on the type of language you're really using in your documents this image text recognition is letting uh, copernic desktop search to scan your um, pdfs and image files that has some uh, text inside that has been like for example, a scan documents. Uh, if you scan a document, it's, it's, you're gonna see the text, but the text might not be recognized. So Copernic Desktop Search can do the thing and index your scan documents and the uh, text content inside. After that, you're gonna see the indexing and performance menu. Inside that menu, you will have all the categories here and the refresh interval and uh, indexing. So if you want, for example, your emails to be updated every day, you, sh you can choose it right here. It's ev updated every day by default, but you can just modify the settings like to change it for every couple days or every three days. If you want your file pictures, music and videos refreshed every day, you can just select change for one day and just click on OK. You can disable some refresh, for example, history and favorite, if you want to disable it. You can just disable the, those sources. Here you're going to have to perform daily indexing task. Uh, you can choose at what time you need this indexing task to be scheduled. So at, by default it's at midnight, so you can change it for the time that you would like. After that, you will have uh, the index location right here. If you want to put uh, your index in a different folder or a different drive, you can just change in the index location here. You will see a clear index and re-index all button here. So you should just use the that function only if you're having troubles with the index. Uh, or if the support uh, team is asking you to do it. So uh, usually you will not have to use that function. Here you will see the clouds, the maximum file size for content indexing. By default, it's set at 50 megabytes. You can set at a higher rate. You must know that this setting is only for content indexing. So it means that if you have in your OneDrive, Dropbox, or Google Drive files that are higher than 50 megabytes, only the first 50 megabytes of the document will be indexed for content. Otherwise, if you have, like, for example, a 100 megabyte document stored in your cloud locations, the first 50 megabyte will be indexed for content. So you can just put this on a higher rate if you want to have your complete documents indexed for the clouds. 
in the advanced menu you will see a couple of items feature for the file types for example so here is the list of all the file extensions that are recognized for Copernic desktop search so if some of the file types you don't want in your index for example here I have a lot of dot log documents on my computer and I wouldn't want them indexed in Copernic because I don't really use them you can just select the file type and just remove it if you want to add a new file type you can just add it and for example that's XYZ and just select which category for that file type for example here it would be a file you can choose which index action you want for this type of document so here you will see document content so if you want to try to extract the content you can choose document content if you want if you only want the file name indexed you can just select file name only so make sure you're choosing the right options for what you need because if you're selecting co document content Copernic desktop search will try to open it and just extract the content so if you have large files it might take long to index those kind of files because Copernic will might have to use all the different extractors and just try them on each and different files so it might take longer to index your settings on the bottom of the page you will have the other settings so you can just choose if whether you want to start Copernic desktop search when your windows is starts you can enable the keyboard shortcut so the, the shortcut is just pressing control key twice and it's it's going to open Copernic desktop search ready to, uh, to perform a search you can also check or uncheck the safe search terms history if you want to keep your search history the search as you type so if you're starting to type a word it's gonna start to search already if you're experiencing some issues with the performance with the software you can just disable this item here you will have the join the early access update program this is for advanced user that would like to have updates more often we are actually pushing updates at least about like four or five times a year with the early access update program and for the normal update program it's about like one or twice a year here you will also have like the outlook plugin that i talked to you about uh, earlier so the native plugins for the like outlook 2015 2016 and 2019 and if you're using earlier versions of Microsoft Outlook you might need to use the Outlook add-in or the NetOffice plugin to be able to index your content if you're using a proxy you can change your proxy settings right here and if you want to show or hide some items in the categories you can just select them here so this is for the main view so if I just like remove the contacts and history favorites when I go back to the main view, I will just have those categories just hidden. So right here you're seeing that I removed the favorite history and everything, the contacts. You will see here that the index documents will be deleted from the index from for the disabled category. So if you're indexing contacts, history or favorite, you should keep them checked on this page you should now go back to main view you're almost ready to go with the software so at this point you can see here at the bottom screen the idle state paused by system monitoring this is the indexing status that you're seeing right here so if you want to index faster for your initial index you can go in tools menu indexing performance and just select unrestricted this is going to use all computer resource. This is going to help building your index faster. So if you have a lot of documents to index, your initial index can take like from few minutes up to 
few hours and maybe in some cases if you're indexing a lot of sources a lot of documents it might take a couple days to complete the initial indexing so after that once your initial index will be built you will only have to refresh once in a while your sources to complete everything and make sure make sure you have all the new documents indexed and uh, deleted documents also removed from your index so if you want to perform a manual update at this point my initial indexing is not completed so i should not already ask for a manual update but once the indexing here you can see it's idle state and not paused by system monitoring because if it's paused by system monitoring it just means that the uh, the indexing is just on pause for uh, low impact on your resources so keep it on unrestricted for as long as you can for initial indexing it's going to index for the next couple hours and just finish indexing everything you can see the indexing status in the view menu indexing status it's going to show you how many indexed documents that you have in your Copernic desktop search and you're going to see the file and folder scanning here everything that's being indexed is displayed here once you're done with seeing the indexing status you can just go back in the view menu and just click again on indexing status so if you want to have more information about Copernic desktop search I would suggest to just subscribe to our YouTube channel or go in your Copernic desktop search software and go to help content to see our online help so that's it I hope it helped you with Copernic desktop search and when the initial indexing will be completed you you will be ready to go and search within your computer.